So how to surrender outcomes? Mm. No, like outcomes. Actually, I was listening. I might paraphrase Hawkins. You know, I was listening to him. I think on Satsang yesterday, on Audible. He said, like, you know, when you're enlightened, like, if if you're facing the death squad, and, uh, and they say, like, uh, okay, we're going to execute you tomorrow, and you go, well, that's fine, you know, that's okay, and then they come back, say, actually, we're going to execute you today. Well, all right, that's all right too. Actually, we're going to execute you now. <laughs> well, not a problem. Okay, you know, I'm ready, sort of thing. So you've released all the charge. You know, you're in a position of neutrality. It doesn't. It no longer means anything. Whether you get executed now, tomorrow, or in three days' time, it's like there's no event to it. Mm. But there's two things with outcomes. There's a, for me, there's an emotional charge, and there's the story. Yeah. So I mean, Hawkins classically talks about one of the things which is nice: surrendering to the worst possible outcome. You know, the worst possible. You know, like um, when I used to be when I used to work in the stock market, the worst possible outcomes I get fired. I, no, it'd be, I'd get fired and I'd never find another job again. And I'd be unemployable. I can remember that one when I was working in the stock market. So if you, uh, if you surrender, well, that's, that's okay. You know, well, fine. I'll never work again. Big deal. You know? So then you neutralize the charge around that. You can also feel it out energetically. So let's say you feel absolute terror that your boss might come and fire you. Or you might get, like, you know, be told that you're going to have a horrible operation at some point. So if you just sit with those feelings and feel them out, when you get to a position of neutrality around those feelings of fear around this thing happening, uh, as you release the, what I found is, like, you know, uh, as I'm releasing the feelings of fear and negativity, my thinking around it automatically changes as I'm tuning up. And suddenly as I, I might feel terror, and then I'm having very terrifying thoughts, but I let go of the thoughts, feel it out. Now I'm feeling mild anxiousness around the situation, and then I'll find I'll have mildly anxious thoughts around it. And then I get to, usually when I get to a state of peace, you know, the, if there's any thoughts, it's like, it's not important, it doesn't matter, it's meaningless, everything's going to be fine, I don't know why I made such a big deal out of it. You know, um, you know so... Um, you know, it'd be like uh, you'll get those thoughts. So you resolve, you can sit with the feelings, you can use the Course of Miracles, place it in. If it's something, uh, if it's something like within a few days and you have a big charge around it, uh, then it's like continuous spiritual work. I've had things, I've shared this before, um, like if you do a tool, spiritual tool, non stop, like your life depends on it, it has enormous power. I think people have known this for ages, like, you know, you, I mean, I'm sure they would have had a phrase like, I say, pray your ass off, but uh, I'm sure they'd have a biblical one for that. Uh, I think there is a biblical one, isn't it? Pray, pray like you, or well, whatever it is. Ceaselessly. Pray ceaselessly, <coughs> thank you. So, so it's like, but God really responds to that intensity of application. You know, like if it's like one prayer every three months, like uh, this situation is unpleasant, so I'd rather you take it away from me. I found, um, so non-stop prayer, I found that the f best way for praying is like non-stop, so fast, this is my experience, so fast that you have no time to think. So I found like with the Lord's Prayer, because uh, it was, Lord's Prayer calibrates very, very high. Uh, and our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that one. So that calibrates very, very high. I think it's got enormous power. So I remembered in the early days Hawkins saying that the Lord's Prayer calibrates very high. And I remember once, uh, yeah, so this is a true story. Uh, and uh, um, I shared it before. So I used to have gout. You know, gout doesn't happen in the feet. I had a really bad gout attack where even my hands swelled up like a big balloon full of acid. It's, your skin swells up full of acid. It's excruciating, agonizing pain. And uh, I couldn't get to sleep because it was so excruciating. And uh, intense, intense pain. And I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to do the Lord's Prayer at 100 miles an hour. Uh, and that's all I was doing. And uh, I was trying not to... Um, anyway, I was doing it at 100 miles an hour. And eventually I got to, to sleep. And that sent me to sleep. And the next morning I got a phone call. I had this Indian friend. She was a missionary, funny enough, before. 
And she gave me a call and she goes, and she knew I was in terrible health, I had kidney failure, I had all these physical symptoms. She gave me a call and said, hey, Sabir, there's this guy from America. He's in London right now and he does this therapy, nutritional therapy, and he's looking for sick guinea pigs <laughs> on his workshop, you know. Do you, do you want to, do you want to come along? You know, this is after I've been like doing the Lord's Prayer non-stop, like my, my ass is on fire. And go, and I was feeling so ill and go, I can't, I can't go out. She said, I'll come and drive you there. I'll, I'll pick you up. So she came and she drove me to this guy who's doing this some blood microscopy and nutritional therapy. It's a true story. I just quickly, and I was praying like non-stop the day before because I was in such agony. And I went there and there was the, all this huge, like uh, it was in a hotel, like a lecture room, all the students there with their microscopes. And, uh, and then they called me up and they looked at my hand because it was puffed like a balloon and puffed up with acid. And they were all like absolutely horrified. And all the students came up and said, can I take photos of it? So they were taking photos of my puffed up, like agonizing hand. And I think I was the best, I was like the most graphic patient, you know. I looked half dead and my hand was like, had swollen up like a balloon. Okay, sure. And they were all like, uh, you, know, you know, he's a great guy. I wonder what his blood looked like, sample of my blood to look under the thing. <laughs> taking photos of my hands. And then the, the lady at the back of the room who were, said to the, the guy who was running the workshop, like, we should use him for a testimonial. And he go, yeah, we'll use him for a testimonial. And we should keep him here for the whole workshop. I said, OK, we'll keep him here for the workshop. So they paid for my living expenses in the hotel for the, I don't know how many days it was, I forgot. They gave me the free supplements and all the nutritional stuff, like super green powders and... Uh, antioxidants and everything and they, they, they gave, and they gave me like organic salads and everything and they made up my food every day for the thing and then within a few days it went from there it just totally disappeared mm -hmm. and then they said to me oh that was miraculous taking photos said, we'd like to have you as a as our guinea pig for the next year so it just means you get free supplements for the next <laughs> year as well which will deliver and you just have to write a testimonial is that okay with you that's all right with me. <laughs> And, uh, and that all happened because I was praying my arse off, you know, someone gave me a lift where I got free accommodation and free organic salads and these supplements cost about, at that time, 10, 20 years ago, about £80 a tub, probably about £150 a tub now. And then I had those free supplements for a year. And that is like the miraculous, mm -hmm. you know, but I think if I was just praying like once every seven hours or something, that wouldn't have happened. So this thing of like intensity. Uh, I find that if you do non-stop prayer, or you do feel the feelings, or you just read your Course in Miracles like your life depends, it, as you shift up the you see it differently, and you let go. I remember once, it was a spiritual experience for me, it's a very simple experience. I was going to be, I was going to a meeting, and then there was, there was bus delays and tube delays, and I really wanted to arrive on time, and then I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, because I was frustrated I'd be late. It was a simple thing, and then at a certain point of praying, like everything had vanished. It was like it was all right. So you're going to be late. You know, it's not a big deal. And you just it was that serenity and this peace. You let go of it, and suddenly there was a miracle. And like whether you're late or not, you don't arrive or not. You know whether you know whether you like, it doesn't matter. You know once you've released the charge, you just completely let go. So I found that with this intensity, like if you only got three or four days. Intense spiritual practice non-stop invites the miraculous.